You know, Claire, my character is trying to find a, a cure for um, Peter. She doesn't know that there are t that there is another vampire and that this disease um, you know, exists. So, through a series of events, it leads her to meet Eleanor. Um, I don't know if I can say that. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can say yeah. anything you want. We've learned. Yeah. Go ahead. Spoilers yeah. are fine. She's so brilliant. Of course, she'll figure that out. Right. <laughs> and she'll be um, awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So, eventually, um, the worlds collide. I, yeah, I can't really tell you why or how, <laughs> how yeah. that happens. But. Yeah, it's... Um, it's it's all very subtle. There's there's a lot of obviously there's like three different storylines and there's there's the obvious side of them living right next to each other, having the two families there. Our 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 family is a little more out of the way. Separate, yeah. Yeah. Um, but but something that I really love about the show is that it's not just spoon fed to you. That that as you're watching it, you really make those connections. And and it's not one of those shows that you kind of just sit down. And, and check out and turn it on and make some dinner. Like it, it, it really is a show that as soon as you finish that episode, as you're going to bed, you're you're really contemplating what you watched and yeah. trying to understand how that connects to something you've seen before or or really thinking about this next character and how if they were to intersect what would happen there and just all these really, really lovely moments that yeah. they create. Yeah. Were you familiar with the novel or the first movie? Yeah. Uh, no, I hadn't. I hadn't seen the. I hadn't read the novel, and I hadn't seen the movie until my callback the night before my callback, and I watched the movie and I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Uh, funnily enough, for me, um, one of my friends I hadn't talked to for a very, very long time. Um, I, I knew her in like kindergarten, and and she ended up having her 18th birthday, and they were going to be going out to Disneyland. So I, I decided to join. And as we were going, we ended up stopping in a cabin over in Utah. And, and as we were looking through DVDs, found Let the Right One In after I booked it. Wow. And we were like, well, we have to watch it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so we watched through the whole film, and I really loved it. And then I got to kind of see some similarities and some differences. And, and it, it was really cool to see. Um, just like a funny little story, being yeah. with my friends in a cabin. It's me. It. Yeah. yeah. Best place to watch a horror movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah no, I watched it uh, like in the country, uh, you know. Yeah, we both late at night. Yeah, yeah, when it was right. snowing, and right. I was like, oh boy. This is really scary. Just to add to it, just to uh -huh. But the movie, the, the, the story is so much more of a love story, I felt like, than a horror story, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's really. Um, I don't know. It's more. It's more of a romance, like a chilling, eerie romance. And right. I think that the show really tries to stay in line with that and yeah. is sort of a love letter. I, I feel like with horror, that's where I love it. Like for it to sit, because like jump scares is such a niche market. Mm -hmm. like, as it happens, and it it's, gets it's, gratuitous. Yeah, like it's, and it, it, you it's don't fun need the it. first few times, and then once you get onto the fifth one, you're like, I'm paying for somebody to yell in my face. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, but but if if there's horror through the writing. And it feels earned. Yeah. yeah. Then, then it becomes less of like a, I'm paying for somebody to yell in my face. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you feel almost like you're part of the story yeah. because you're connecting it. Right. I like it. Yeah. What do you think about moving into New York City, too, and having people, like, just the vampires just blending in? <laughs> well, yeah. I think that's, it makes it so relatable. Like, it really, it makes it this, this sort of chaotic, um, unstable very precarious world we live in right now, very divided, um, scary world we live in right now um, in every facet of our lives. Uh, we feel it, I think, especially living in New York. I, I mean, I certainly do, riding the subway, everything. Um, it's, it, it feels... It feels very prescient and, and present to this moment. Yeah, and, and not living in New York, I feel like a lot of my friends and the people around me, when they figured out that I was filming out here, they, they really view New York as like the land of opportunity or where you make it big. Or, so I feel like that's also a very interesting thing is becoming a vampire. There's obviously like immortality and a lot of stuff like that. And so all of a sudden, if there is immortality and there's all these things, then everything kind of becomes useless mm -hmm. because there is no set time frame and kind of just time goes. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of gets rid of that kind of novelty factor of New York mm -hmm. for a lot of the people that I'm friends with and a lot of people that I know.
So you have this, you know, very dark, very serious show, and then you have two main cast members who are kids. <laughs> yeah. um, what's the atmosphere like on set? Is it is it fun? Is it challenging all the time? It's, we, it's we're mostly together all the time, right. so we don't interact really with the okay. other storylines. Right. So, but yeah, it's so fun and so sweet, and and there, I think the kids are really the heart and soul of the show, and. Mm. It's it's just great how the vampires are also not. It sets us apart in that these kids are not villains; they're victims right. Right. in this yeah. thing. Um, so yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the a lot of the vampire stories in the past have really focused on romantic love, in like oh it's so taboo like the vampire could bite me at any point in time. Um, right. But but this one really focuses on like an unconditional love of like the family, and and it's really cool because it like it like talks and about friends. like yeah it talks about like loyalty versus yeah. morality yeah. because like it's how how loyal are you to this person you've grown up with this person who's your family yeah like are are you loyal enough that you're willing to sacrifice your own morals to yeah. help them yeah and so it, it asks a lot of very intelligent yeah. questions. Yeah. Right. And what can you say about your relationship with your father? Because obviously you have some great moments in the opening series just where you tell him all. But yeah. he obviously has a, has you. Right? Yeah. He's to really back there himself. Yeah, no, um, he, I have a very difficult, terrible relationship with him. I think I really, I mean, I really resent him. I don't, my, you know, politically, morally, I don't align with him at all. So it is a lot of, like, separating myself from him, but also needing to use his name and his influence to, to help me, um, to help me help him. Yeah, and and, and and also my my relationship is pretty strained, mm -hmm. but um, but I don't have it as hard as she does because I had her as almost a mother figure, like taking care of me, whereas she she kind of had to step into the place of being in charge, and I just got to kind of be under her wing. But that but, makes us very close. Yeah, that the the parent um, child relationship is. A